I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, and I welcome you to the Eternal City, the city of Rome, where during our spiritual pilgrimage during this Lenten season, we are visiting the Lenten Stational Churches of Rome. Today on our pilgrimage, we go to the church of San Martino e Silvestro, ai Monti, St. Martin and St. Sylvester on the mountain. The mountain is the Esquiline Hill. So once again, we'll be heading up on a mountain. St. Martin was, is the patron saint of soldiers and has always been venerated here at Rome. Sylvester is actually Pope Sylvester, who was the pope at the time of Constantine. He had a very long pontificate. It was during his pontificate that he called, along with Constantine, the first great ecumenical council at Nicaea, which defended with absolute clarity the divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. It's important to remember that Sylvester, during this significant pontificate, is also remembered in legend. There are a number of fascinating medieval legends, one of which tells us that there was a great dragon in the Roman Forum, and St. Sylvester was called upon to save the people who were being terrorized by this dragon. It would appear that it was an allegory, because when he actually entered into the Roman Forum and pronounced the blessing, the dragon was buried and swallowed up once again in the earth, symbolizing the triumph of the forces of Christianity over paganism. So we think of the great soldier saint, St. Martin, and the great Pope, Sylvester, who led us to the great glory of the Nicene Creed. As we reflect upon them today, let us go up once again the Escaline Hill to their church. It was actually built on the Opian Hill, a small hill where once stood Nero's golden house. Penitents who would gather together for procession to this church on this special day had to pass very near the Maruliana necropolis. This was a terrifying spot where the pagan Romans oftentimes would leave the bodies of slaves and criminals to rot. This practice was finally stopped when a priest named Equizio built a small chapel here to commemorate those martyrs whose bodies had not been handed over by their executioners. As we approach the church of Saints Martin and Sylvester from the outside, there is very little that would really point to this church as being one of the most ancient in all of Rome. If we look carefully, however, we can see a number of great base stones which date back to late antiquity, which have recently been uncovered and are able to be seen now from the side of the church. This does give some hint of the ancient origin of this church. As far back as we can go, it appears that this church dates to the time of the great Roman persecutions, when it was a Domus Dei, or a house of God, and came to be known as the Titulus Equiti, probably due to the fact that either the house or the land on this spot belonged to this priest whose name was Equitio, in the Latin Equitius. He had built this chapel for the martyrs whose bodies had never been recovered. The original church, however, was finally built by the legendary Pope St. Sylvester, who reigned as pontiff from 314 to 335. This church was eventually restored by Pope Sumacus, who reigned from 498 to 514. He was the pontiff responsible for having the church dedicated for the first time in honor of St. Martin of Tours and also his illustrious predecessor who built the first church, St. Sylvester. These two men were the first two non-martyrs to be honored by the church. The crypt underneath the church reveals to us that the original church was incorporated into the baths of the Emperor Trajan. This leads us to understand more clearly now one of the ancient names of the church, which was San Martino in Ternis, St. Martin in the Baths. The church is of great significance historically for a number of reasons. Above all else, this was the Roman site for the preparation and the meeting that led to the planning for the great Council of Nicaea in the year 325. It was this first great ecumenical council which decided definitively against Arianism 
and defended the co-eternity and full divinity of the Son of God and his equality with the Father. It was also on this site that a very famous Roman diocesan synod took place, which was presided over by Pope Sylvester and the Emperor Constantine. This church was also the spot in Rome that for the first time the Nicene Creed, which we recite every Sunday, was proclaimed publicly to the joy of the Christian population. It was also the site where the damnable heretical books of Arius, Sabellius, and the heretic Victorius were publicly burned. The church was restored by Pope Hadrian and rebuilt almost completely by Pope Sergius II in 844. His pontificate lasted to the year 847. In the year 1650, the church was entrusted to the Carmelites, who were given not only the church, but the adjoining convent. The Carmelites eventually restored themselves the entire edifice and entrusted the work to the brilliant architect Pietro da Cortona, who lived from 1596 to 1669. Also associated with this famous church is the great champion of the Catholic reform, St. Charles Borromeo. He was responsible for restoring the beautiful ceiling in this church. There are many other things to see of interest in the church. Of particular interest are two paintings which date back to the 16th century and are found along the left wall. These paintings depict for us the basilicas of St. Peter and St. John Lateran as they existed in medieval times. One can also see a side chapel where it is believed Pope Sylvester said mass. Preserved in this chapel are his papal throne and his mitre. It is believed, according to tradition, that he was the first of the Western bishops to begin to wear the mitre. It is therefore believed accordingly that this mitre, which is preserved in this church, is the oldest bishop's mitre in all of Christendom. Under the main altar of this church are preserved the relics of Pope St. Sylvester and also Pope St. Martin I, who reigned from 649 to 655. In the church we find 24 ancient columns with Corinthian capitals that are quite impressive. Underneath this church we can enter into the crypt, which hold the relics of a number of popes, not only Pope Sylvester, but also Pope Sergius, Pope Fabian, Pope Stephen I, Pope Soter, Syriacus, Anastasius, and Pope Innocent I. Pope Sergius II, who reigned from 844 to 847, also enshrined relics of many other martyrs taken from the catacombs of Priscilla. These relics and remains were brought inside the city walls and point to the fact that the period was rather unstable with frequent raids out in the countryside. There is an ancient dedication that also speaks that we remember also the martyrs whose names are known to God alone.